Bondi's big beach party. Happy New Year! But things turn dangerous. That was really, really close. A rescue with more than meets the eye. Boys, it's that same girl. We've, we've had her before. There's romance in the air. I guess I'm going out on a date. <laughs> and tears in the tower. <laughs> New Year's Eve. As Sydney Harbour erupts, Bondi kicks into party mode. There's a party on every corner, but the biggest of all is on the beachfront. Snoop Dogg rocks in the new year with 15,000 fans. With so many parties in Bondi, there are inevitable consequences. As the roadies bump out, Bondi's lifeguards bump in an hour earlier than normal. Okay. It's a hive of activity at 5 a.m. Oh, here comes H-Man coming down the hill. The first sunrise of the year is full of promise. Yes, Sunday the 1st of January, 2012, you little beauty. All right, we'll chuck some flags up, actually. Dino leads the first patrol on the beach. Ooh, papa, mum, dad, I love you. Happy New, Happy New Year's. Year, guys. Happy, New Year. Happy New Year's. It's looking surprisingly ordered in a, in, a, in a mad sort of sense. People are pretty happy and so far so good. Um, hope it stays like this. But Bondi never stays the same. You're saying that there's two right there. With Dino's team monitoring intoxicated swimmers at North Bondi, the south end is unpatrolled. H has no choice but to break lifeguard protocol and leave the tower unattended. Another swimmer tries to reach the two men. By now, the pair have been dragged 100 metres from shore. By the time Dino and Max back up, H has christened the year. Our oldest lifeguard of the service knocks off the first double rescue and first rescue of 2012. He's pretty good old H man, 62 and going strong. Now for the first lecture of 2012. What are you doing? Oh, it's very dangerous, guys. Come on. Yeah. OK? Have yeah. you, been, you been out all night? You shouldn't be in the water. She could get really hurt. Yeah. Don't be sorry to me. Like, it's really serious, huh? Be careful, hey? That was really, really close. That, would, that second guy would have drowned. I'd reach him like this, he was like this. Oh, I'm stoked, mate. That, that would have been two deaths. If that had been half an hour before we got here, gone. That's not an exaggeration. <laughs> 6 a.m. There are thousands on the beach, but not a towel in sight. This time of day, normally, there's people doing push-ups, boxing, sprinting. They make up the majority of the population on the beach, but today I'd say it's made up of People sleeping off a hangover, sleeping off last night. We would like to welcome you Thank to you. the 2012. <laughs> Buddy. Oh. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Hello. Hello, good morning. Boys, we're just waking everyone up because I don't want you to get dehydrated with this sun coming out if you've been out all night. All right. One reveller has started the year with an unusual resolution. Got here at 4am, and, and he's and he got every person. That he's been waiting for people to calm down, and he's been shaking them. Oh, I love you all. Up here. It's barely 7am when the relaxed mood is shattered again. So there's a girl out in, right in front of this dangerous current sign, and we've been trying to megaphone her and whistle, and. Um, her friends just approached me on the beach and said she doesn't know what she's doing out there and she's completely deaf, so she can't hear anything we're saying. Hands gone up, man. Hands gone up. Trainee Max Ashford heads out. Uh, 
That's a long paddle for Max. He's going at least 200 metres. The girl may have taken in water. The dumping doesn't help. The rescue victim is worse than anticipated. Then, Dino recognises the patient. Boys, it's that same girl. We've, we've had her before. Call an amber. I've got a strong pulse on the right. A 20-year-old woman has been dragged from the surf close to drowning. But she's a familiar face. We've rescued this girl three times in the last two weeks. She's, uh, she's, a, she's a public nuisance now. It's getting out of control. Lifeguards believe she intentionally put herself in harm's way. People should realise it's not a game. That could really have compromised us if we had a recess going on and we have to deal with it, someone like that. Is she your friend? Hey. hey. Is she your friend? Yes. And you, you let her in the water? No. No. This was much more than a harmless prank and something 19-year-old trainee Max Ashford has never dealt with. Yeah, well, in the end, it does make you pretty angry because taking the time out of our day to rescue her who's putting it on is taking us away from the rest of the people who could really seriously be drowning. An ambulance is on its way, but H also calls police. She will be in the lifeguard tower. Meanwhile, it's a United Nations of backpackers on Bondi. Cheers. Happy New Year, innit? <laughs> Feliz de Novo! The best beach in the world, surely, so we have to come down here for the party. Scotland, England, Chile! But the year starts badly for two German backpackers. They're welcome to shore anyway. I'm here. What's wrong? Nothing. Are you all right? Yeah, we're right. Where are you from? From Germany. From Germany. All right. See the flags here? Yeah, it's fine. You know? Yeah. Do you know what the flags are for? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. Swim between them. Swim between them. I'm not drunk or something like that. That's that's what that was not the reason. Good that the lifeguards are over here. I don't think you could have put your bags closer to the no swimming sign. Right. <laughs> Germans don't know that have the knowledge and that stuff. Yeah. I think that's the problem. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year, guy. More lifeguards come on duty to bolster the team. Guys, just so you know, Max is paddling out for one backpackers. Including former trainee, Maxie. Come around, you've got to lay down, you've got to lay on like your face in that way. This time, the rescue victim is all the way from Moscow. It's a textbook rescue. Nice form, he's got her on the board, he's pulled her back. Look at this, he's going to give her a little ride, a little floater. I have not done it before, surfing, so it was great. The waves, you were feeling it. And it was so fast. Oh my God, it was awesome. <laughs> Jana has had the ride of her life. It's very nice, very kind. And uh, oh, he's very cute, blue eyes. It's what <laughs> I like. <laughs> Thank you. Aussie guys. <laughs> Jana's not the only Russian attracting the attention of lifeguards. And they I guess it's one of the perks of the job. I just met this beautifully stunning girl from Moscow, and uh, I guess I'm going out on a date. <laughs> now, but the beauty of it is, I know and I accept how like that I am quite ugly, a bit rough around the edges, but it just proves that it's not all about looks. It's all about like what's in here, you know. The new year has started well for some. For others, it's yet to arrive. Hey, you all right? You all right? You had a big night last night? Hey? Where'd you go last night, mate? Can't remember. I'm gonna help you get up, right? I'm gonna go up the towel, you give you some water. Alright. Okay? What's your name? T. T? Maxi. The 
party crowd sort of died away now. There's one or two left sleeping on the beach, but the full family crowd's come down now. So nine o'clock they would have got to bed after watching the fireworks, and they're all down here now. Tons of kids filling up the beach. The beach is just going to be packed, I think, by about lunchtime. It's really starting to fill up. We're going to have a busy afternoon. January the 1st, 2012, it's, uh, it's busy. This is the busiest I've seen it probably for a couple of years. But the age-old lessons of surf safety need to be taught all over again. Please don't swim in front of the yellow non-swimming sign. Please come back in, go swim in between the flags. Lifeguards need to herd swimmers into the flags before the tide turns and the rips become deadly. Back at the tower, the girl who put herself in harm's way doesn't require medical attention. She's attracted police attention instead. You understand you place other people's lives at risk? Yeah, I know. Okay. Anybody in their right mind would not have gone swimming there. Yeah, they're taking her away. She remarkably made a recovery when the police arrived. They actually took her away, so, yeah, it was a good end to that little incident. No one treats a hangover better than Dr Pacific. Thousands arrive for a consultation. The beach is packed, so there's just not enough room for everyone to swim. Low tide is just an hour away. Lifeguards brace for the lethal combination of big crowds and strong rips. Attention everyone in the water. Guys, we need your full attention. Again, this is going to get really dangerous down here and we're just about to ban all swimming down here. But there's another drama unfolding in the tower. Bondi's first stubbed toe of the year. Two-year-old Lenny fell off his scooter. He never cries. Oh. <laughs> did you cry when you did it? No, you didn't cry. <laughs> this, uh, this one, band aids, ready? <laughs> you know what's going to make it better, Lenny? We're going to go and have pizza and ice cream. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's so hard, Lenny, give him a high five. Come on. High five? Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> fell over on his scooter. They all the kids fall over on their scooter down here. He's five. Also doing fine are Matt D and Russian tourist Dasha. Sex and shine. That's right. Don't even laugh. You're gonna live here forever. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Why not, huh? Yes, yeah, come here and don't leave. You never leave. Yeah. As low tide hits, thousands are rounded up into the flags. There are flags 200 metres up the beach. Please, swim here. But keeping them there proves impossible. Then, Gonzo has a eureka moment. I reckon we could maybe get a third set of flags up just in front of the tower, because there's so many people down here today. We can't really um, have them all just bunched up in the two sets down north. They're too small. So making a third set would make it a lot easier for us. Gons has called the third set of flags, H man. Upstairs for thinking, downstairs for dancing, and Gonzo does it both so well. This will give us a third swimming area in the middle of the beach, getting uh, more access to a set of flags. Now the challenge is to move wayward swimmers back into the safety zone. Ready out of the water. It's a really dangerous area, just get straight out of the water. You want to have a swim, the red and yellow flag. You come straight back to shore. That's the same as always. You tell them, you know, a hundred times to move, but they just don't move. But, you know, I just told them to swim in. Swimmers who refuse to listen pay the price. All these swimmers, keep moving over. Well, there's two now. There's one almost out the rocks at the iceberg. Scores of swimmers are rescued in the space of an hour. I was really scared that I was really worried about sinking in the water. There's still so many people, it's seven o'clock. We've got three sets of flags, and either side of three sets of flags, there's rips. Approaching 7 p.m., it's pack-up time, but the New Year's crowd have different ideas.
Everyone knows that the lifeguards go home at 7 o'clock. If you go in the water and you get into trouble after 7 o'clock, you're on your own. There's no one to help you. Yeah, I mean, we want to protect and serve, but it's the day. We want to have a beer as well. <laughs> Once again, to all the swimmers out there, guys, the lifeguards are finishing up for the day. I recommend you call it a day and come back tomorrow. Massive crowd on the beach for pack up today. Probably be here at least an hour, an hour over time. Dino's been on duty for 12 hours and still conducting rescues. If lifeguards leave now, lives will almost certainly be lost. It was frustrating because, you know, we were meant to go home an hour ago. Told him already. If you don't jump in twice. Oh, it's, your boys are starting to get a little bit frustrated, you know, it's a long day and people just aren't listening to it. You're rescuing the same people in the same spots. It's like they just don't listen. It's just frustrating, you know. They just you're doing it for them, and they don't even really respect it. Or boys, let's just go. Let's not watch them anymore. Yeah. But we'll be here till nine o'clock if we keep watching. The beach is now officially closed. There have been scores of warnings, yet people still swim in rips. I did leave now and went home, and someone, you know, went after I was gone. I still feel pretty guilty. On Bondi, New Year's Day party is still rocking and it's 8pm. After a 15-hour day, the lifeguards finally call it quits. Now it's time for them to enjoy a beer. My oh, day's no, been massive. We've had uh, rescues all day and probably one of the biggest crowds I've seen for many years. So, you know, I thought uh, after that, really nice, come and have a beer. But old habits die hard. Hoppo and Reedy are back on the job. A couple struggle 100 metres out. Hoppo and Reedy paddle out in near darkness. Reedy picks off one swimmer. Hoppo rescues two more. The couple had been given numerous warnings by lifeguards earlier that afternoon. Like the, the sand just went down. We just kept going. Like... Um, we're gonna be the stubborn people that's gonna die, and we almost did. Yeah. That was scary. I'm listen never gonna... to the life, guys. Listen to the life, guys. Yeah, seriously, listen to the life, guys. It's probably lucky that Reedy and I said we'll go and have a beer because if we weren't having a beer, we went home. There'd be no one there for them. They would have drowned for sure. Hoppo and Reedy finally go home. But at 9:30 p.m., a call from police. Lifeguards are back on duty. I had the biggest day ever, and I just got home and had some dinner, and I got a call as a chopper down here searching for a missing person. A drunken swimmer's gone in, and uh, he's never come out. They both went in. Yeah. They both went in and one come out. Been on the drink all day, and all from last night and all day. Come down for a swim, and uh, yeah, never come out of the water. So I'm pretty upset, you know, we were here to quarter past eight tonight. We did loads of rescues, it was getting dark and we warned people over and over. Oh yeah, affirmative, thank you. Yeah, thanks for your assistance. They've had a look at um, the shore. They've also had a look at uh, the cliff face. Postponing. At 10 p.m., the search is postponed. I guess we'll sort of take us as it goes in the morning. If he's still missing, then it's more of a body recovery, which will be um, not nice at all. It's an absolute tragedy if something has occurred here, but weighing up all the options, they told me he was a pretty, he was a good swimmer. Yeah, sure, he'd had a gut full of piss, but I, mean, I reckon he's somewhere else. It's a horrible way to start the year. Next morning, Dino gets a phone call about the missing swimmer. How did it happen? Yeah, mate, I guess it's the best result. It is frustrating, but uh, happy not to be looking for a body this morning. I'll, I'll pass it on to you, John. He's all right, boys. He was drunk and irresponsible, and he's turned up at his mum's house. It's really, I don't know how to take it. I guess I'm glad he's not dead. You know, it says it all. It's a hot day. The 1st of January, they got blind. They've gone for a swim, and 
missed each other. Well, he left his clothes on the beach. I guess you would, you know, he's gone missing and yeah. just disappeared. Did he walk home through Bondi on New Year's Day in the nude <laughs> and not even know about it? <laughs> Next time on Bondi Rescue, the kid from the wrong side of the tracks gets a chance at his dream job. Well, I'm going to try and not stuff it up. If you want the thrills, we're going to hit the roof. Prepare for the spills. Oh. And a mystery illness baffles lifeguards. 